Welcome back, everybody. We are playing Pyre. We've won our first match, and now we're going to go on and try to uh, win more matches of Magic uh, Metaphysical Liberty Soccer. All right, so it looks like we're back in the wagon. Well, my friends, what can I say? The rights are real, and we're in. The Getting Out of Here Club. And next up on the agenda, keep chasing stars until we're free. Until we are free. Until we're free. Here, yeah, yeah. sounds fine. Oh, might as well be us instead of Lindell back there. Anyway, guess we better start packing. As the others go about their business, Hedwin turns to you. Reader, come walk with me while the stars are still out. You and Hedwin walk in silence for a time before he speaks up. You have questions? Come, ask away. We need you in on this for the long haul. Hmm, okay. Hmm. Why can't I do it? You ask Hedwin why he and his companions did not invite you to participate in the rites firsthand, and relied only on your guidance. He maintains eye contact and his smile. Good question, my friend. Going to have a lot of time to discuss that, and many other things. Make you a deal. Read the stars for us again, and I'll tell you all about it on the way. You sense he speaks truly as he beckons towards the fading dark above. Oh, so I, only, I actually only did get one question. Whoops. Oh, well. Well, let's uh, read some stars. Here we go. Ooh, scorpion made of meteors. That is a lot of things I don't want. That's a long way north and west. We'll see if this old wagon's fit for it. Then he turns to the others. How's it going, Rookie? Imps fed, wheels clean. Status, Jody? No sign of howlers. Everything is secure. Good. Then get some rest. We're headed to the spring of Jomuare. At dawn, we're off. Off. Okay, so this is cur related location. Hang out in the black wagon a bit. Oh, she wants to talk again. You sense Jadariel's steel gaze well before you turn to her. Reader, rummaging about the wagon once again. Tell me something now that you are here. Look at me. Are you afraid of me? You consider the question. You've never met someone, you've never before met someone like her, but do you know something of what happens to those who remain in the downside for many years? Hmm. Say nothing. Hmm. 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 No, I'm not really afraid of you. You tell her that, although you do not yet know each other well, you do not fear her, and on the contrary, feel safer in her presence. Truly. In that case, I have much work left to do. You shall fear me yet if you survive this place. Now then, I shall go and make my rounds. Oh dear. She walks away. You feel the floor of the wagon shake with her step. Gain plus one hope for the next right. Okay, that's cool. So hanging out with my friends actually buffs them up. Sounds great to me. Consoling headwind about something. Being consoled by Ruki. What the fuck? Huh. Any new pages? Nope, no new pages. How strange. Okay, well... Yes, we're good. Drive, imps. Continue the journey. Unless, is there a way I could find Hedwin and figure out what he's being consoled about? Nope, okay. Let's continue the journey, then. Uh, looks like we don't have any alternate options. And Ruki knows this mountain pass through to an arid region. Okay, so I was right about being curve related stuff. He can take us through. Another mad airtime. And another amazing looking transition. Okay. Oh my god, rainbow dunes. So cool. The climate here in Jomuare Valley is hot and uncomfortable. On top of that, that occurs. Gotcha. We have a stowaway. Home. Can we go home? She must have latched onto the undercarriage as you crossed the ridge. Her manner is odd, though you sense she means no harm. She must have overheard some of your fellow exiles' conversations. 
You need but say the word, Hedwin. Oh, come on, you, you can't be serious, Jody. She's just some kid who managed to climb aboard our wagon undetected, but still. Do it, Jody. Jodariel approaches the girl and looms over her. Listen to me, girl. We cannot guarantee that we shall get you home or any one of us. But at present, we have room for you and adequate provisions. You may accompany us for the time. Jodariel leaves without awaiting a response, presumably to make room in the wagon for your new guest. The stowaway is overjoyed at this. Really? You are so kind. You are most kind to someone you just met like me. May the eight scribes smile upon you all. Some revere them as gods. <laughs> She claps her hands, bursts into laughter, and performs some sort of dance. Ruki stares at all this and leans in close to Hedwin. Yes, hey, so, um, what gives? First the reader, and now we're taking her along. What, are we going to take in every might-bidden drive imp we find now, too? Easy, Ruki. I think he'd want for us to bring this one along. Ooh, Sandalwood? I thought you said he asked we find someone to fit in every type of mask near as I can tell. Yours would fit her just fine. Sandalwood is somebody important. He asks that we use our best judgment. Besides, we send her away, she'll go telling anyone she finds about us. We can't risk that what right now. So, um, can I come in? It's very hot, and I'm a little thirsty, and a little tired, too. Yes, you're welcome here with us. One question, though. What do we call you? Um, oh, well, this is embarrassing. I think I... Uh, but I, I, I don't know for sure. It's just... Back home, they called me lots of names, like, for the color of my hair. They made fun of you just because you've got gray hair? Uh, that's it! Uh, my name, it rhymes with gray. My name, my name, it, uh, it's just, they called me lots of names. You sense the girl struggling to recollect a certain name she felt best suited her. You think that you can help the stowaway girl make peace with her name. May, K, Fay, Day, Zay, Shay, Ray, Lay, Che, Nay, Tay, Zay, Gay, Bay, Bay. This can't possibly be right. <laughs> okay, so she could maybe be T. Reconsider the first set of names. May, K, A. A, Zay. So I feel like Faye or Gay is probably. We'll go Faye. You suggest that the stowaway girl's name is Faye. Why? That's it. My name is Faye. My name is Faye. I bet it's whatever I said it was. Oh, maybe not. Where I am from, they called me Faye the Fair. But I guess maybe you don't have to say that part because I didn't really like it. Your fellow exiles decide to bring Faye along for now. She almost collapses from exhaustion, so you take her in and show her somewhere she can rest. Faye, join the group. She is tired but excited. Welcome her aboard. So, do I have to pick a party of three out of a larger number of people? Oh man, that's really sad because that means not everyone gets to become free. Oh no. I don't want to have to make decisions. The Black Wagon arrives in a somewhat peaceful stretch of Jomiware Valley. Your companions wish to hole up here for the night to give Faye and all of you a little time to rest. Okay, well, let's hang out in the wagon real quick. Hey, we can talk to Faye. Faye seems to be recovering well since you found her. She seems fascinated by everything and everyone in the wagon. Oh, uh, hi, mister. You are the one who knew my name. You guessed it right, you did. Thank you for your hospitality. I've just been eating with the imps and talking to the wagon. The wagon, he and I are the same age, almost to the very day, but I am older by three weeks, so I'm giving him a hard time. Little brother, I call him. He is a good wagon, isn't he? He will take us very, very far. My little brother, sure, he pulls my hair sometimes, and I don't like it very much, but he is family. I am happy to be here with my family. I thought that I had lost them all again. I thought that I had lost them all. Oh, but we have stopped now, haven't we? Then I should go outside to dance in case the scribes are watching. Bye, mister! D uh, okay, see ya. Smiling back at you, she prances out the door. That was okay. A lot of talking all of a sudden. Forging. The night wings. Where's the thing that indicates, uh, what's her name status? 
Um, Jodariel status. Greentail family portrait. Drive imp. Drive imp. Drive imp. Drive imp. Edwin's cooking tins. Ah, throw red. Okay, cool. Well, I guess we're. I guess we're good. Oh, actually, you know, let's go back in. And does Faye appear on the roster now? Nope. Okay, good. Well, not necessarily good. I don't know, whatever. Consider the options. Consider the following. Your fellow exiles are taking a moment to un unwind. Jodariel motions for you to join them. Best get used to your new life here, reader. We seldom get such moments of reprieve. Perhaps some further study of that book shall pass the time. You could join me for a little stroll if you're feeling up to it. Always something to be forged around here. Or you could teach us more of what you know. Prepare us for the next rite. In any case, we do what we can to stay busy. Keeps the sense of isolation well at bay. You can choose from several vocations. Alright, well let's pick a vocation. You can forage, study, or mentor. I don't want to forage, so we either want to study... Let's give everyone the bonuses. We're a reader, so let's read. You find a relatively quiet clearing to study the Book of Rites with undivided attention. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. Focus on which aspect of the Book of Rites? Okay. So I can either make people faster, make people come back faster, or give them bigger aura. Definitely aura. You tune yourself to the strange and mystic properties of the Book of Rites, embracing such as possible that which cannot be explained or truly known. Inspiration comes to you in a flash. Whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. You gain the render's influence, tenacity. All night wings gain plus one presence. Pretty sweet. All right. Let's hop back in here real quick, make sure there's nothing else to do, and continue on our journey. The path leading further west splits off, and once again your fellow exiles turn the choice of where to go over to you. Faye seems enthusiastic for whichever route you choose. So we can go through to Fall Flat. Faye believes those who travel this path shall be swift as Jormer of the Eight Scribes. Faye believes those who travel this path will be as strong as Goal of the Eight Scribes. Well, we buffed our presence in this one, so let's take the speed. Makes sense. So we'll go to Fall Flat get some kind of speed buff. I wonder if that's like a permanent stat increase or something. Faye is behaving stranger than usual as you traverse the stark badlands of Fall Flat. This was the path that Jomer Minimane ran across so many, many times. Can you not feel his presence, him and all his friends, here in the sand and the air and all about? At first you pay it little heed, though later you observe your fellow exiles seem to have more of a lightness in their step. Perhaps it was the previous day's rest that did everyone good. Companions gain plus one quickness for the next right. Okay, so it's not a permanent thing. I bet the other one would have given us either plus one hope or plus one presence for the next right. So, okay. En route to the spring of Joamare, you hear all about the roving slug market, which appears to be nearby. Rookie insists you take a look after you settle in. Well, I know we have an item we can sell, so... Let's talk to people first, though. Hey, Edwin. Edwin motions for you to join him. His easygoing smile soon fades. You asked before how come you can't conduct the rites yourself. It's a fair question, and I wanted to respond. It's not that we don't think you could do it. I told you when we met you're tougher than you look. It's, it's just your connection to those books, to us. We need your guidance out there in the field. We can't do this ourselves. I've made that clear. You've made that clear. You're our reader. Out of all of us, you have the most important job. Nor do we have to substitute if you decide that job is not for you. He pauses for a moment, then his expression softens. Look, we'll help each other get out of here. And as for the rights, we don't want you to feel left out. Every time you go out there, you're right there with us as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, I'll leave you to it. Thanks for hearing me out. He nods to you in a reassuring way as he departs leaving you to consider what he said. We got a new page. Wait, is this not the same page? 
Oh, this is a new version of the same page? What the fuck? Oh, weird. Okay. You know perhaps the thrice- wait. No, this is... But this isn't new. But this isn't... Ah, okay. So it's a new page in the same chapter. How many nations did I scour in the name of Solium Myrrh? How many countries fell before our spears and blades? Such questions mattered less to me with every passing victory. Our legion swelled across the land and our dominion grew. The Emperor Solium Myrrh paid all this little heed. He only tended to his personal affairs. Our legions relished the autonomy. We did not know that the Emperor cared nothing for his legions nor his people. He cared only for that which was before him. One day, he learned of such a thing as to befit his name and vowed to seek it out. Okay. So, the guy who set up all these rites is probably the Emperor, dude. That's my guess. Alright, well we're gonna hit the slug market next time on Pixel Pals. Thank you all for joining me again. See ya, bye, bye-bye.